And here we are. I hope everybody's doing okay. I've, I hope everything is good. Sorry about the hiccup. This will also be up on YouTube, definitely. And, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, that's one of the... Yeah, but I'm, I don't want to go into it right now. But it, it's been a rough couple of days. But thank you. Thank you all for, for coming to today's show. Today we're going to learn Spanish. And um, hoy vamos a aprender español. That's what I just said, but in Spanish. Hoy, today, we are going to learn, vamos a aprender Spanish, español. So what we're going to do today is going through the alphabet very quickly. But, uh, well, not so quickly, actually, very intensely. <laughs> but uh, it seems like a simple, you know, like it's very basic 101. So I hope it's going to be easy for all y'all who are not so, uh, who are not so mm, into the Spanish culture, let's say the language at all, who can probably say una cerveza, por favor, and <laughs> that's about it, uh, but uh, wait a second, let's try and do something. There we go. I hope you all are receiving this nice and brightly. And this will be up on YouTube, definitely. So first, first of all, we're going to go through the vowels, just the pronunciation of them, because it's one of the easy parts. And I kind of like to start with the easy parts, right? If it's cool for you. Good, 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 good. I'm glad that that audio is coming clear. Uh, so. The vowels are more or less the same we have in English, A, E, I, O, U. But we pronounce them A, E, I, O, U. And we always pronounce them like that. Like there is no variation of them. They are always, no matter where they're placed in the word or towards which consonant they are placed, or they're, they're always sounding the same way. A, E, I, O, U. Simple, plain, super, super clear. Which uh, reminds me of a song, of course, <laughs> by Peret. Uh, which will go something like... Borriquito como tu, tururu, que no sabe ni la u, tururu. Borriquito como tu, tururu. Yo soy más que tú. Which it was, uh, Peret was a um, Roma, de Romani descendant uh, person from migrants who lived in Catalonia. And um, he was a great artist and a great guy overall. And he had like very leftist tendencies during Franco's Spain. So yeah, but it started with, uh, with the vowels, very simple and clear. A, E, I, O, U. Yeah, exactly. So we're gonna go. Th we're gonna th go through the letters, and I prepared a little document that you know for y'all people in the chat. I'm gonna share over here if you wanna have it with you because you've been you've been you've been doing this live. It's also it's also on my Patreon for patrons who can, you know, keep the PDF of the lesson. And we're going to start. We're going to start with the vowels. And there you go. A. A is the first letter of the alphabet. And we're going to go through the whole alphabet one by one. So in this case, it's A from anarchismo, which is anarchism, of course, and anti-capitalismo, anti-capitalism. So a prominent anarchist figure is Comrade uh, Buenaventura Durruti over here. So this is the first letter, A. And A, you can say anarchismo, anticapitalismo. Amanecer, which is the, the dawn. And in Spanish, the fascist uh, party called the uh, Golden Dawn, Amanecer Dorado 
who was happily considered a criminal organization. Hola, Rendis. Welcome. So that's good news, I, I suppose. You know, it was considered a criminal organization and people were protesting heavily in Greece to, to ban those people, to get them out of politics. Bienvenida. Bienvenido. Bienvenide. Which is something new that we're doing right now in, in Spanish. Spanish is always also a very gendered um, uh, language. And we're coming with an inclusive neutral term. So if, if you say bienvenido, which is welcome, and you say bienvenida, uh, it's, which is welcome, but for, for, for the female-ish, gendered, and you can say bienvenide, which is gender neutral, which is new. It's not recognized by the Spanish Academy, which are very backwards and are behind in, our, in all things. But, but it's something that we're using right now in leftist circles a lot. English is kind of an exception. Most languages have a writing system that actually represents their phonetics. Yeah, absolutely. R con R, cigarro. <laughs> yeah. R con R, barril. Rapidito, ruedan los carros con azúcar a ferrocarril. That's a, that's a good one. Uh, is, that's from a song, isn't it? But we'll get there. We'll get there. We're on the A right now. On la letra A. Letra A. Letter A that you can absolutely uh, write the capital letter here and say A. Ah. Whoopsie. Wait a sec. Because it's, it's this box is a little bit tiny. But you can round it up with a nice circle. And say, okay, the stroke is going to be black. Oh, righty. Okay, it's not allowing me to do stroke. Okay, there you go. Black. And where do I have stroke over here? There you go. That rings a bell, doesn't it? <laughs> so, anarchismo, anticapitalismo, letra A. That's the first letter in our alphabet. And that's what's going to be from now on. But yeah. A. Ah, A. Ah, como la anarquía. O el anarquismo, que es la tendencia política. General. Very general, very broad, okay? So let's move on to the next letter. B. That's the letter B. It's more or less the same as in English. B, which is barricade, barricada, barrio. Here we find the double R that we're going to go for later. Yeah, I know that it should be recognized, the, the inclusive E, the uh, neutral gender should be recognized by the by the RE, by the, the academy, but they're they're way behind. That is what it is. You know, they're very reactionary. So barricada, which is a barricade, and barrio. Barrio is the neighborhood. But also in some places in Latin America it means a slum. That's one of the things of uh, of um, Spanish. It's a beautifully polysemic type of language. So you can find many meanings in simple words in most words and if you would travel through regions um, uh, you're gonna find many discrepancies if you know what I'm saying but yeah so B B and it's always pronounced B B B B B and we're gonna find we're gonna find a similar case with the V but but if we find a B or a V in a word they're gonna be pronounced the same which makes things, you know, when, when we were kids at school, it made things very difficult when we were hearing new words and we couldn't discern if they were written with a B or a V because they sounded the same. So letters that have like a B or like a V, like you can, for instance, uh, 
So, valiente, valiente, it sounds as if we could write a B instead of a V. And it should be, you know, good, good as well. Valiente. Beca. Yeah, Beca is a scholarship. <laughs> it's written, well, as you see it in the chat. But barricada y valiente, they, they are supposedly pronounced the same. Uh, it's true that in certain usages, people tend to, to do the V a little bit softer, but it shouldn't, in theory, in theory. But if you, if you make a little bit of a V, uh, aspirated V, and you say valiente instead of valiente, very hard, it's okay. <laughs> Don't beat yourself up. But they, they theoretically sound the same. So valiente means brave, and vaso means uh, like a glass, glass of water, which I don't have with me because I bring a botella, a bottle. <laughs> which is nice to take uh, a little sip from every now and then. But yeah, but instead of a vaso with a vaso with a, with a V, I have a botella. Botella, a bottle with a B. So that's how it goes with the letter B. Letra B. Las heroicas protestas en Chile. The heroic, the heroic protests in Chile. The heroic Chilean protests. There are, our comrades in Chile are right now um, protesting again after the COVID-19 restrictions. So, las... las Oh, yeah. Oh, he wrote Baca. Damn, I can see. Uh, there's a very, very madrileño uh, sentence, which is Veo uh, menos que un gato de escayola, which uh, says that I, I see less than a cat made of plaster. <laughs> That's me. That's Uncle Javi. That's the way it goes. So, barricada, barrio. Letra B. B, and it's pronounced like that, okay? Heroica, las heroicas protestas en Chile. The heroic protests in Chile. Okay, let's move on to the next page. Next letter, which is C. Letter C. That we say C. C. And C can have two sounds. So that we it's got, it can be a little bit tricky, okay? Does the cat made of plaster part have a story for the idiom? I don't know what's behind it, to be honest. I know it's very madrileño. It's very specific from Madrid. But I don't know the, the backstory for this one. As much as we have like a word called uh, dabuti. <laughs> dabuti. It, uh, dabuti. Which has a funny story. Uh, dabuti is kind of slang. But it, it's... Um, it comes from um, it comes from a, a story with uh, Amadeus of Savoia of Savoia, uh, Amadeo de Savoia, uh, an Italian king that they wanted to put on top of us at some point. They wanted to impose uh, an Italian king uh, on the Spanish people, and uh, I mean instead of the French dynasty of the Bourbons that we have right now, which are full of shit and they're thieving pieces of shit. But that's a that's a different story. And uh, Amadeo de Savoya, in his coronation ceremony, he ordered this very expensive wine, uh, this very exclusive, expensive wine from the from the wineries called Dabuti with two T's. And uh, someone misplaced the crates of that famous wine, but they served the whatever best wine they had available at the ceremony. And at some point, I think it was the king or the king's assistant who asked uh, the, the waiter. Is this a good wine? <laughs> and he and the waiter assuringly said, "Sí, sí, es da booty. <laughs> and that stayed in the in the slang for some reason. <laughs> yeah, el gato de escayola, the plaster cat. That's a very madrileño thing. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> so Z and C can be camarada and cooperativa. Camarada, comrade. Uh, cooperativa or uh, co-op, cooperative, or uh, cooperación, cooperation, which would be written. Mm -hmm. 
cooperación. Watch the accent. We'll go through the accents in another lesson, but check it out right now. And uh, yeah, camarada, comrade, in this case cooperación, cooperation or cooperativa. Cooperative. Uh, che Guevara y Fidel Castro. Buenos camaradas. They were very good comrades. They did a revolution together. They may not be eye to eye in everything, but they had a common interest. So an inter interés común. One thing with the letter C it, it, is that it works. Um... Yeah, that's my, that's my faulty tongue. <laughs> I have uh, uh -huh, this huge tongue and moving it around. It's but C uh, th th th. And you can use it as a, as a th phoneme or a k. So consonants are a little bit trickier than vowels. But camarada, cooperativa. But if you write uh, like a brush, the word for brush, which is cepillo, you pronounce cepillo, which in Latin America could be, you, you could use the letter S, cepillo, and it would be correct. C, S, and Z can sound the same too in the case, absolutely. In Latin America, uh, which, you know, I, I think, you know, if you're, if you're American, it's very conducive that you speak with uh, any of the Latin American accents. They are fantastic. But yeah, most, I mean, yeah, in Latin America in general, uh, you, can, you can use C, you could pronounce cepillo instead of cepillo that we say in Madrid. I'm going to show you what I know from, from my vital experience, but it's true that there are other experiences that are fantastic, that are, you well, know, my Latin American people who are the best, to be honest. They're fantastic. They're great. I got some family in Argentina. I got a ton of friends in, in Mexico, in Guatemala, in Guatemala, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but yeah. So, Ernesto Che Guevara and Fidel Castro, good comrades. Che Guevara y Fidel Castro, buenos camaradas. So, camarada, cepillo. Cepillo is a brush, by the way. Cooperativa o cooperar. So, you can use the C as a K or as a Th if you're in the Spanish uh, variant of, of, of uh, Castilian or, uh, or as a as uh, if you're in the um, in the um, Latin America variant of variants of, of Castilian Spanish, which which there are a lot, each the more beautiful. To be honest, I'm uh, I'm 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 absolutely enamored with all the different accents in in Spanish. To be honest, it's something I really love, and every time I travel to Argentina to visit my family there, I come back with a few new words. Because they have like very, very specific vocabulary there. <laughs> because I don't know, as what we call melocotón, they call durazno, and uh, it's not the same. But we'll get there, you know, theoretically in Castilian Spanish from Spain. Uh, camarada, cooperativa, cepillo. In Castilian, Spanish, in Castilian from Latin America, camarada, cooperativa, cepillo. Or cepillo. If, if you're in the Argentinian variety, there are so many good accents. But I'm just going to stick to the, ba to the basics so far. But take that into account, that you know those variations exist and they're super valid. So they're, there's no... Wrong answer if it's within, you know, what it what is used. So moving on to next letter. Oh my god, this is low. Eh. It, it's there. Okay, it's not where Ah, because I'm probably... There you go. So this is one... Argentina has a, has a lot of unique words. Yeah. Haven't heard from any of the other Spanish countries. I mean, yeah, pff, Colombian and, and, and Venezuelan accents are absolutely beautiful, mesmerizing. You know, Central American uh, accents are 
wonderful. The southern Mexican and the northern Mexican accents are absolutely completely different. And uh, they're, all, they're both lovely in their own way. One is, uh, one is more musical and the other one is more rugged. Like the, the northern is way more rugged. But but the the southern is way more musical. The the, the Mexican that you can hear from people in in Yucatan, in the Yucatan Peninsula, and so on. It's beautiful. So see, this is not a letter per se. This is a digraph. But um, yeah, that it's it's you know one of the good things of Spanish. It's a it's a language that you can that you can easily get the basics and get communicative very far very fast. Sorry. And then, uh, and then you go, you can go in depth and enjoy learning for the rest of your life all kinds of juicy, wonderful things, and that's that's something I'll, I can't get tired. Can't get tired. Did I? Oh, okay. Okay. So, che che it's a digraph. It's not a letter, but I want to include it here. This is very old school. It's not it is not even taught in schools like this, but I think it's very important towards uh, learning Spanish as a foreign language. Now, while yeah, um it's more the Mayan influence in the south, which links to Guatemala, the north of Guatemala and the south of Mexico are, you know, basically almost like very, very close cultures because they were influenced by the Mayan empire. So, and so let's, uh, the next letter, Che, Che, the CH, which is very similar when you say, I don't know, Noam Chomsky or stuff like that. So lucha de clases, which means class struggle. And we put the word lucha here first, De, that's off, classes. So instead of doing class first and then struggle, we say struggle of classes. Lucha de clases, the class struggle. As you see in the poster, in the image over here, uh, up on, uh, next to the letter, say viva la lucha de la clase obrera, which means uh, hooray for the struggle of the working class. La clase obrera, the working class. We can also say clase trabajadora. Yeah, probably. Yeah, definitely. Hola, espavientos. Bienvenido a esta clase de español para guiris. So, che, lucha de clases. And then Mapuche. Mapuche are the indigenous uh, people that live uh, in most of the north and middle parts of Chile and Argentina. And they are uh, an ancient uh, people, fantastic ancient people who are still struggling to keep some of the land that historically belongs to them and they're still in struggle with multinational corporations like Coca-Cola, for instance. So that's the Mapuche people. The lucha de clases, or as we saw on the former letter on the C, we saw the picture of Don Ernesto Che, Che Guevara. Che Guevara. So that's the Che, Che, C-H, Che which is not a letter per se, but it's a digraph that we used to study in that order when I was educated in the 80s, but at some point it was phased out. And But I think it's very important to learn these digraphs in when you're, you know, teaching uh, Spanish as a foreign language. So, lucha de clases, class struggle, Mapuche. Mapuche, the Mapuche people, or el pueblo Mapuche, which we can call them. El Pueblo Mapuche. And the box got a little bit short, but we can make it a little bit bigger. Oopsie. There you go. So. Yeah. Yeah, they're just, right now, they're just people, you know. 
Of course, uh, there there are people fighting for their struggles, and you know one of the most successful revolutions in in Mexico, which be I would say the Zapatistas and the case of Cheran, of the people of Cheran, they're they're definitely linked to the indigenous struggles, uh, in which the indigenous struggle also um, served. Uh, the interests of the working class, because both of them collided, you know, the, I mean, the coalesced, they were, you know, naturally serving each other, because getting rid of imperialism gets you rid of a lot of problems for the people trying to live a peaceful, good existence. So, che, lucha de clases y el pueblo mapuche. Cartel en una protesta obrera en Bolivia. This is poster in a working class protest in Bolivia. The beautiful people of Bolivia who are suffering now. Cartel, in this, don't, don't go to the drug cartels because that's, that's, not, that's a neologism. Cartel means poster, or in this case, this banner over here, okay? The Viva la Lucha de la Clase Obrera. So poster in a protest Working class, you see, working class protests because they go in different order in Bolivia. I'm not capitalizing, capitalizing because I am adher adhering to the, um, to the non-capitalization as a non-hierarchical structure of the language. So uh, if you are curious about this, I think it was... Uh, I think it was Mies van der Rohe uh, or uh, Johannes Itten. I don't remember which one of them. I think it was Mies van der Rohe who had very interesting argumentations about it. And you can, you know, ZLN comrades, you know that. You know the drill. You haven't started in Chile, but it's like Mexico. They learned the historical struggle of the Mapuche against the Spanish colonizers. But they don't hear a peep about their current struggles. Yeah, exactly. 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 And the multinational corporations, I insist that, you know, they're, it's Coca-Cola trying to get their water sources and stuff like that. So, okay, moving on, next letter. D, D, D. <clears throat> D is always pronounced the same way. So, Uh, desarrollo sostenible, which is sustainable development. Desarrollo means development. And división, which means division. And again, check the, the accent over here. Okay. Because, you know, this word doesn't exist, but if we wrote the... Let's say... If we wrote it like that, we could... Pronounce it division, division. Uh, if you put the accent over here, which is a, a word that doesn't exist, but just for the sake of, of explaining the accent. And if I put the accent here, you, you would say division. None of these words exist, but division, division. The accent falls on the, on the last syllable which is something that happens also in Spanish. We have like three types of, uh, of uh, accentuations. We have uh, acute, like in this case, división, whoops, agudas, palabras agudas, división, palabras llanas, in this case, des desarrollo. So the accent falls in here, desarrollo. And then división, división, same, uh, sostenible, so, 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 sostenible. And there are rules for the accents, but I'm not gonna, not gonna bother you with those right now. So D, letra D, desarrollo sostenible, división. The caption says, huertos urbanos, un paso hacia una ciudad sostenible. So it's uh, huertos, is like farms, urbanos, urban, so urban farms. One, uno, step, paso, hacia, towards, una, a, ciudad, city, 
sustainable. Sustainable. See, as we applied most most of the times with the ac the adjectives, we apply them after the the noun they're they're modifying. Ciudad sostenible, sustainable city. So it's the other way around. Unless we're using them in poetry, but again, uh, that's way too advanced for the le for the lesson today. So this is a human. Uh, this is a an urban farm in in Madrid, Huerto Urbano, in my in my home city of Madrid, where I was born and raised. I was gone and I'm back. Moving on. E. Letter E, remember? A, E, I, O, U. A, E, I, O, U. A, E, I, O, U. So, E. Empatía. Empathy. Ecología. Ecology. Again. You learn the very basics about the colonization in in your school, but nothing about the current struggles. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you cannot expect uh, current schools. I mean, in 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 our school system, they never taught us about the Franco dictatorship and uh, and about the 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 transition towards democracy and so on. You know, in in and it was a huge modifier of Spanish. Uh, you know. <laughs> Vitam, <laughs> capricious nerd. Ah, uh, welcome, welcome, Nicole. Uh, so, e, empatía. E, ecología. Empathy and ecology. Ponernos en lugar de la otra persona. La empatía. Poner uh, is to put. Poner, nos. Nos, it's a reflexive uh, modifier. So, ponernos is to put ourselves. En, in, lugar, place, de, of, the, la, other, otra, persona, person. La, the, empatía, empathy. Again, empathy, empatía. Ponernos en lugar de la otra persona. La empatía. To place ourselves in the, pla in the place of other people. Empathy. So, next letter. F. 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 As in fede feminismo. Feminism. Feminismo. F. And it's always pronounced the same. So, it's no, there's no exceptions to this one. Feminismo. Feminism. Federación. Federation. And it says here, el símbolo de la lucha feminista. The, el, símbolo, symbol, de, of, la, the, lucha, struggle, feminista, feminist. El símbolo de la lucha feminista. The symbol of the feminist struggle. The fist. And um, feminism, federation. It's more or less like in English. So sh you shouldn't have problems. Uh, the name of the letter in Spanish, F. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Verb conjugation, that's going to be another lesson. That's going to be a tough tough bone to break but we'll we'll get there okay <laughs> g g guerrilla y gestión and there there's two ways to pronounce this 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 letter as you've just seen you've just heard and in the case of yeah and never call it gorilla there's no gorilla <laughs> gorilla is a it's a beautiful simian <laughs> guerrilla let me break it down by syllables. Ge, 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 ri, ri, ya, ya. And I know it got, it's got like two of these digraphs that are like a pain in the ass for foreigns. Like uh, that, <laughs> the hard R's are difficult for. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I'm so glad you like my, my idioms. I don't know if I made it up or I heard it somewhere. <laughs> you know, I play it by ear. I'm always <laughs> winging it. Uh, yeah, verb verb conjugations are are complex, and trying to I'm I'm gonna try and be in communication with a friend who is a Spanish teacher for foreign people to to figure out how they manage to explain subjunctive some sub, oh, subjunctive um, uh, verb conjugation to foreign people because it's a very difficult uh, form to explain. When you use it every day, it's easy peasy. Let's go for let's go through this pronunciation again. If you can uh, repeat after me, that's fantastic. But I understand that you could be in a public place or something. But ge, and y you see how we use the u as a as a because if I if I didn't put the u here, it would read guerrilla, which is absurd because it doesn't exist that word. But it it would pronounce like that. But if we use the u. Then it's ge. We don't pronounce this U. The U is there to make the, the G instead of a H, like in gestión or autogestión. It makes it into a ge sound. So instead of a G, it's a ge. So ge is a ge as in garrison or uh, Guantanamo. <laughs> that's a terrible, that's a terrible thing. Uh, but it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful, I, I, it, actually, it's a beautiful community in Cuba, despite of the, in, in spite of the detention center, illegal detention center, center that uh, the United States has. By the way, Cuba in Spanish is Cuba, which is even simpler. Cuba. But then again, ge, and this U has this function to make the G into a G sound. So, ge. Ri, ya, guerrilla, guerrilla. That's the way to pronounce this fantastic uh, way of armed struggle against oppressive, uh, massive powers of military oppression. Gestión, gestión is management. Autogestión is self-management. So if gestión, which is two syllable, ges, and then tión which we'll, we'll have to go through the deep tongues at some point. <laughs> Cuba Libre. <laughs> that was a great one, as pavientas. Baby's first Spanish words. Cuba Libre. <laughs> Perfect. Baby wins life in the first round. So, gestión. Gestión could be managing anything, but autogestión, it's gestión is the word, managing, but auto means self, self-management. This is a word modifier, and it reads as, a, as the, the word itself is one word, autogestión, but it means self-management, which in English would be two words, autogestión, or self-management, but in this case, it's just the one word, autogestión which is when people uh, manage their own communities without the aid of uh, an external government or body of government that could be potentially oppressive, which is not a good thing, not something that we, we want to... And here it says, Una camarada guerrillera de Vietnam. So uh, a comrade, a guerrillera, because if it would be a man, it would be a guerrillero. If it, but this is a, 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 a woman, comrade, and she is a guerrillera. So, una camarada guerrillera de Vietnam. Una, a, camarada, comrade. Camarada is a simple word. You, you should take it for granted or, already. You know that word already, okay? Estadounidenses, yes, instead of United States peoples, yes. United Statesians, that's a good, that's a good one. Gorilla, gorilla warfare. Yeah, yeah. I was confused too. Like, what? Oh, I'm missing some some chats. I'm gonna scroll back. <laughs> don't wanna, <laughs> don't wanna miss you people. So, 
Yeah, uh, very convivation is yeah, and uh, the trail, <laughs> the trail, yeah, in Slovak, yeah, yeah, I hear you, I hear you. Uh, confused when uh, you heard gori gorilla warfare. Yeah, 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 absolutely, Rendis, me too. First time I heard gorilla gor gorilla warfare, I was like, what? They fighting with with apes? You know, I was like this teenager, very confused knowing very little in English and saying, what, did I hear this well? Which kind of got me confused. And then I lost a couple of more sentences of what I was listening to. So no good. Tongue twisters with rrr are the worst for foreigners. <laughs> what? What? Simslina. 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 Ice cream has their atril. Smzrlina. Wow. Yeah, that's a tongue twister. Almost, almost, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. I got I got a I got a this huge tongue. Barely fits in my mouth, so not not very good with consonants. And I used to live in Poland. So and I used to live in Ulica Gnieszniewska. <laughs> Which at the beginning it was even worse. Gnieszniewska. <laughs> so I had it written down, and when I gave it to the taxi drivers, it was too tight <laughs> here. <laughs> so yeah, autonomy, definitely. Autogestion, autonomy. Uh, sort of like Estadounidenses, USians, <laughs> prefer the Futurama. Earthlicians, <laughs> Earthlicians, <laughs> uh, guerrilla, guerrilla gardeners, jardineros, guer no, the, you see the guerrilla gardening, we, we imported the whole thing in English, actually, we imported guerrilla gardening, and we say with this very Spanish accent, gardening, <laughs> so yeah, Gnieszynska was, was a, was, was a difficult, difficult one for me too and I got eventually got used to it, it took some practice I don't even know anymore uh, a comrade una camarada guerrillera de Vietnam so a comrade a guerrilla uh, a comrade guerrilla fighter from Vietnam guerrilla okay moving on towards H H Yeah, guerrilla gardening is a thing. You you make a garden sprout in whatever free patch of land in your city. And uh, you plant things without waiting for permission from anyone. That's basically guerrilla gardening. And it's really good stuff. Thank you so much, Real Knights, for all, giving all, all these subs. You're, you're, you're awesome through and through. You still guerrilla garden in San Diego. That's great. San Diego. So, H. H, at the beginning of a word, H is mute. So, we, when we say these words, we say huelga, strike, historia, history. So, we don't say huelga or historia. We say huelga. The H does not pronounce. It's just there to modify the meaning of the word. So, huelga, huelga, it starts, we start pronouncing. You, 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 gotta, you gotta read it as, as if you only read this part. Huelga. Same with historia. So, we can translate the image, which says... Okay, I cannot highlight it very well. I'm going to try and do a marquee or something. <laughs> Unidad de acción. Let me try and fill. Fill. Let's see if everything is... I got to collapse some stuff. Uh, there. Unidad de acción. Unidad... A unit, de, of, acción, action, 
which is a double C, which is like the C works in both of the um, in both of the of the ways that it can work as a K and as a as a th or s. So if we if I read this in in a Latin American accent, we could say unidad de acción. But if I read it in in uh, Castilians from Spain, uh, I would say unidad de acción. Unity of action or action unit. So action unit, garantía de victoria, guarantee of victory. So garantía, warranty, de, of, victoria, victory. Let me let me let me try and catch up with you people. <laughs> what are you trying to do in Bratislava again? Let me rewind a little bit. Uh yeah. Ah the guerrilla gardening, definitely. Seems to just pronounce things with a Spanish accent. <laughs> it's easier. Yeah, definitely. Like if I'm a, I am explaining everything with a very thick Spanish accent. <laughs> that would be something, I even I do have an accent, but, and, you know, I, I, you can do worse. <laughs> That's what I mean to say. <laughs> but, yeah, you know what to do in Bratislava. Yeah, go find an old person. They'll tell me, definitely. It's a great way to start an urban garden when you can't get the city to sign off on of it. Definitely. Conflace, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have it. We have a lot of that. I remember my grandpa. You know, you remember Clark Gable, the um, the the actor, the classic movies actor, Clark Gable, and uh, my my grandpa. He called him Clar Clarkable. Or sometimes Caracable, like cable face. So this is a poster for General Strike. General Strike is Huelga General. Let me uh, pull it over here. Huelga General, you see here, I'm marking it with the blue square over here. Huelga General. And says, Contra la Reforma Laboral, against the labor reform. Uh, 29M, which is 20, 29 de mayo, I suppose, 29th of May. UHP, what, what is UHP? Which is something I wanted to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can do way worse than accents. It, it always can. You you can always get get worse. <laughs> As so, yeah, uh, where I live now, I can do it because stone pavers aren't known for their. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Uh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta invest a little bit to make the soil more nutritious and find the plants that are like better for. Okay, back to the lesson. <laughs> so UHP. In a way that I'm going to try and make this... Uh, how do you... Effects. Transparency. Transparencia. I'm going to put it in a third... 20%. That's okay. So, U. U is from unios. Which is not unidos. Unios is the imperative. But I'm not going to go through verbs right now. So, unios... Hermanos, which it's using masculine as a gender neutral. We could say hermanes right now in the modern times. This goes from this goes way back, to be honest. So unios hermanes proletarias. So uh, proletarian brothers and sisters or siblings unite. Formad piquetes. We see when a verb. Uh, okay, I should really put the highlight here. This word for formad, I don't know if you see it right. Unidos hijos de no. Okay, we'll go through swear words at the end as a as a um, as a as a reward for <laughs> putting up with the rest of the lesson. <laughs> So good, 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 good. 
So farmad, when the, when the verb ends in a D, that's the imperative. It's telling you to make, in this case, to form uh, piquetes. It's like the picket, picket lines. Piquetes, huachepe, which is unios hermanos proletarios o hermanes proletarias. Por la unidad de acción, for the unity of action, for the... Yeah, basically. Esto acaba de empezar. This has just begun. And you see that it includes like the, the anarchist flag, the republican flag, and the red flag. Everybody united. So, huelga, a strike. Historia, history. And it's not pronounced. Like, if, uh, like a, there's another word. A ver. Uh, over here, up here. Ahí. Ahí means over there. The age still mute. You don't say the the, the the age. You don't say the thing. You say ahí. So if I if I wrote this, which would be absolutely horrendous to to read, ah, it hurts. But ahí, it's pronounced the same than if you write it correctly and say ahí, which is means like over there, like yeah, right there, ahí, ahí. <laughs> but wait, do, do not confuse like uh, if, if I write uh, where's this uh, okay I'm gonna try and put this somewhere <laughs> you can see it bring to the front uh, range bring to front Make this box over here. So, ahí. Ahí y ahí. <laughs> These are three different words, okay? <laughs> and they sound very similar. <laughs> the most important words in the language, the swears, absolutely. Uh, the thing that makes me sad is that when we, when learning Arabic, they don't teach the swears. Yeah. That's uh, that sucks. Uh, you, you can you can hook up with someone that will teach you the swears in in secrecy, and <laughs> and it's even more fun. You need to be able to insult fascists, regardless of the language they use. Absolutely, absolutely. I call that praxis. Absolutely. So I, I, for me, swearing is like a default mode. I'm a very working class person. What can I say? Well, <laughs> teach. Teach you the swear words. <laughs> there are a lot of swear words and they're extremely fun. And they're extremely... Like, I, I remember uh, when in Polish, you know, they were te teaching me the swear words. And I was like, but this sounds so so toyish. Like, hui, hui. What's a hui? A well, hui is a dick. <laughs> you call someone a dick and it's like, hui. And, you you know, when you... you, you confuse it with a very sounding uh, classic, hijo de puta... It, it's, you know, way less, uh, let's say, less powerful. Uh, you know, so doesn't sound as powerful. So, okay, back to the lesson. Ahí, <laughs> over there. Ahí, there is or there are. There, they exist, there are. Ahí, from the verb haber. The verb is haber. Ay, sorry. Haber. Ah. Okay, well... <laughs> I may need a blank page for this, but uh, I, from the verb haber, <laughs> fact, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, swear words are fantastic. In Spanish, you may not know the language, but you sure know when they're being insulted. <laughs> Hijo de puta, hay que decirlo más. So, okay, I'll I'll try and link you to that song later. So, ahí, over there. Ay, there are. And ay, which is like, oh, and it's more like an interjection. And these, these three words sound very similar. Ahí. I, I, uh, the last two actually sound just the same. I, I, and we're talk we're gonna talk about how the Y works exactly as the I uh, sometimes and sometimes not. 
but we'll get there, okay? So, H. H. Huelga. Historia. UHP. Unidos Hermanes Proletarios. Moving on. Next letter. H was a tough one, eh? I. E. E. Yo, Blood Donuts, have I seen thoughts yet? Uh, I mean, we, we used to hang out a lot, but, you know, we're in very different time zones and it sucks, you know, because he's working all day and then when he's streaming, I'm totally passed out because it's like five in the morning, six in the morning, my, my time. Uh, so it's been forever, but I love Kamazot's Altar. Fantastic comrade, lovely person. He revealed his face? I know his face because we've been on call before and, and uh, we've been talking, you know, before hiding uh, for the public. But it's good that he can walk out in the open. Fantastic guy, comrade, lovely person, human being, and very, very, you know, conscious, wonderful comrade. So, yeah. Uh, hey, anyway, back to the lessons. <laughs> Uh, e. E this is the letter I. We say E. And we have a couple of beautiful letters here that say in independencia, which are it's very self-evident, which is uh, independence. And izquierda, which if you pronounced it like with a Latin American, could be independencia, like this C, C here. I, I would say independencia because I'm from Madrid, Spain, and that's how I learned to speak Spanish. But if you're in a Latin American country, it's very common to say independencia. And it's super cool, and we gotta love it. Same here, the Z. Izquierda. I say izquierda the same way I say independencia. But uh, in Latin America, you would say izquierda. And it's super cool, and it sounds delicious, and it sounds fantastic, because my Latin American comrades are wonderful, and I love them. Anyway, independencia is independence, like the Basque and Catalonian uh, uh, independence movements that are very, very uh, legitimate and very, very uh, powerful right now, and they're working towards gaining more independence from the Spanish state, which is generally um, a good thing because it, it is inheritance of the most of the Francoist structures, considering judges and uh, police and military and whatnot, which were not changed uh, by the supposed alleged quote unquote uh, transition to democracy. So yeah, independencia is a good thing, you know, for the Basque people and the Catalonian people who have their own language, uh, their own languages, like uh, in the case of the Basque, they have Euskara, which is a beautiful language with very mysterious origin. And the Catalonians uh, have Catalan, or the Catalan language. Uh, which is a beautiful uh, romance language, more uh, something, you know, it's like Spanish, Italian, French, Portuguese. It, they're, they're languages that come from the Latin language. They stem from the Latin language with their own characteristics and they're, they're fantastic. So here it says, the, the little caption on the picture says, Solidaridad entre movimientos por la independencia en Euskadi y Cataluña. Again, I skip capitalization on purpose, so uh, check uh, check Mies van der Rohe for that. Uh, the teacher at the Bauhaus and a fan fantastic uh, graphic designer, industrial designer, and a uh, very left-leaning person. So, yeah, solidaridad, solidarity, forever. You know the drill. Entre, between. Movimientos, movements, por, for, la, the, independencia, independence, en, in, Euskadi, the Basque country, it's the, the name, y, and, Catalunya, it, which is, uh, it is written like that because it's written in Catalonia, it's NY, and it's pronounced more, more or less, if, if I wrote it like in Spanish, could be like that. 
Catalonia with an ñ, which we'll get there. But I'm going to keep it in Catalonia because it's their language and it's their identity that I want to protect in this text over here. I hope you don't mind. I guess you won't. So moving on. J. The J, the famous J letter that everybody calls me Javier. Javier. And my name is Javier. So it's J. It's another of the tongue twisters, I guess, when you're learning Spanish uh, in, for the first time. In, in Catalonian language, there's no ñ. In, in, in Spanish language, yes, there's an, an ñ. But yeah, we'll get there. Don't worry about it. So, juventud. And in this case, we have the picture of the Juventudes Comunistas de Chile, Comité Central. So, uh, Communist Youth of Chile, Central Committee. So it's, uh, this was during the, during the times of, whoop, is this like an empty block? This was during the times of, of Salvador Allende, of course. The Chilean Communist Youth, youth. so Juventud, and Justicia, Justice. Juventud. Justicia. Juventud. Justicia. I don't know. Does it? Does it? Does it make sense? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> try and try and practice. If if you're not in a super embarrassing situation in public where you're you have people around, you can try and and ja, ja, juventud. And next time you see me, you say yo, Javi, Javi. It's a little bit like the aging husband, but ha harder, <laughs> much harder. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, juventud, justicia. For a moment, I was like Juventus. <laughs> no, not the Italian football team. <laughs> uh, well, uh, the, the people in the United States called soccer, uh, which is absolutely football. Soccer comes from um, association, the football association, which was different from the college in rugby, which is the other variant of fo football that was, uh, yeah. The British, yeah, and in, and here in Spain we call it football as well, not soccer. Soccer, it's a, it's a, it's something for. It's something for of of the. Um, it's something of the North American persuasion. If you exclude Mexico, which is part of North America, if you know what I'm saying, it's United States and Canada, basically. It's funny for you because the British started. And we, <laughs> I mean, everybody kept it, uh, but yeah, we all we all have it. It's it extended, you know, and uh, for, I have a very difficult relationship with the uh, sucker, uh, which we write like um, we write it like this. Let me show you. So if, 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 if in English, uh, okay, uh, if, if you write in English like that, football, in Spanish, we, we write it, we, we write football, <laughs> football, but that's, uh, you know, I, I have a difficult relationship with football, with uh, soccer, uh, football, soccer, the soccer. <laughs> like a lollipop <laughs> yeah football 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 la churma football club santa maradona football club that uh, manu chao had a really uh, i think it was uh, during the mano negra time where he made like the football song santa maradona that one, i'm not gonna play over here because of the copyright restrictions and so on and but yeah so juventud youth Justicia, justice. And of course, there's no more just youth than the communist youth in Chile back in the 70s. Before the coup d'etat that was planned by the CIA and uh, sponsored by the CIA and the School of Chicago, the Chicago School of Economics, which, you know, under the, the doctrine of Milton Friedman, one of the most evil people in the world, probably, um, there's a stiff competition, to be honest, <laughs> with evil characters. But yeah. Okay, next. Ka. Ka. 
the, the letter K is not very used in the Spanish language, but it is very used in the Basque language, for instance. But it's not. It, it K and W are two words that we don't use too much in the Spanish language uh, natively. We use it mostly on on foreign words. But I wanted I wanted to include it here because it's very it's very useful in the punk scene for for instance to to change things that happen with a with a hard c that sound k to be replaced by with a k like the the supposedly correct way that uh, ocupación is is written uh, according to the Royal Spanish Academy of the Language, la Real Academia de la Lengua Española, a.k.a. RAE, it would be like this, with a C, ocupación. But I put it with a K because the, the, the whole movement, uh, which is a social movement of uh, occupying empty uh, houses and empty spaces that have been abandoned by speculative powers and... Uh, or derelict by public power sometimes, just to speculate with them on the price of the market, um, is started with a K. So, yeah. Football. Vallecas. Yes, Vallecas. Wonderful working class. Let's see. I'm going to write it here. Vallecas. Which is actually... Uh -uh. Let me do something here. It is very useful, or uh, very... <laughs> Let me see if I can pull it over here. I think there's the internet space that it's a little bit tight, toit. So I'm gonna ochenta, eighty, yeah, setenta, seventy. It is very common to to watch in in Vallecas the slogan Vallecas Zona Roja, which means Vallecas is the name of the of the working class neighborhood. Um, called the um, Vallecas, which is officially written with a C, but in this case, the, the alternative people, they call it Vallecas with a K. Zona, zone, roja, red. So Vallecas is a red zone. It's a red zone, not in a <laughs> Republican, Democrat type of red zone, but in a communist type of uh, way. They're very organized people, really nice people. People in Vallecas, Zona Roja, really nice people. So, Ocupación and Cale Borroca, which is not a Spanish uh, term. Uh, it's a Basque term that we can translate as um, Lucha Callejera. So, Ocupación is occupying uh, the occupation of buildings. Like some people do it for a living, but most of the time, they what what the what the movement does is it's um, yeah <laughs> you only recognize right for communism <laughs> <coughs> yeah definitely liberals appropriate the libertarian term and conservative the um, the color red <clears throat> to the point that in the United States everything is turning conservative to be honest uh, towards fascist like everything is so right wing shifted. But that's uh, that's another story. We we could say that the uh, the the, the the occupation movement, the Occupa movement, uh, grabs like empty buildings. Uh, there was this one. Uh, the one in the picture is La Casa de la Montaña that was uh, abandoned for about tw ten years, and it was occupied for another. 20 something years I don't remember exactly when I've played there and I slept there and it was it they were they were repurposed as social centers so nobody is using it for themselves but they're using it to 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 give uh, the people places to be like uh, they they do classes they had a gym 
like they you, they could use for free. They had um, spaces for people to organize. They had um, spaces for people to party. Where you you could you could I, I, actually I was playing there with one of my punk bands uh, back in the 1990s. I don't remember exactly when. Um, 19, early 2000s maybe. I don't know. But yeah, it's the occupation of unoccupied bu buildings. Absolutely. In the outskirts of Torino, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all over. It's all over Europe, to be honest. The squad, squatter movement, it's known, squatting, you know. But it, they're they're occupied most of the time, uh, and some people use do you occupy those? Um, they they occupy those those houses to live themselves, but you know, but because there are people who can't afford to live anywhere else, so it's way better still than homelessness if you know what i mean but most of the time the, those those buildings are social i remember the the case of a uh, cucucha uh big occupied building that had a it had a funny story because they they couldn't they couldn't take them out because the owner was missing the owner was um it was a factory it was a factory and the, the owner was uh, in search and they they had a search warrant uh, because they they used the factory it was was supposed to be like a agro agro farming industry machinery and they were dealing a lot with Colombia basically they were dealing back and forth with that machinery in Colombia and what what we found out is that most of oh, oh, the police found out is that the police they, they, they found that they they were hiding uh, lots of cocaine in the in that machinery so the owner the owner was on the run. <laughs> And the and the building was there abandoned. So when they knew about the story, it was like, yeah, let's make a big social center. And it was like this huge industrial building, Cucucha, in the outskirts of uh, of Bilbao. And um, yeah, I remember I've I've played there like a couple of times. It was occupied for a, a, another. It was one of those, you know, another one of those very stable uh, squats that had like they they had so much space that they didn't know what to do with it i remember one of the floor one of the floors they had like the, these um these walls to climb you know these um these things for climbers for for them to train and they have a workshop of of uh of uh foam and you know they had a lot of community projects including a a, a food bank yeah rocodromos yeah they had like uh, the but because it was big, it was a big industrial building. So it was like seven floors tall, and uh, there were seven industrial f floors that were like super high ceilings, you know, and very ample places. No, no many, not many walls and whatnot. So it, it was a lot of space. Yeah, rock rock climbing walls. Yeah, it was. It was yeah. Anyway. <laughs> It's been kind of uh, the right wing in in Spain is using the, the this narrative now to spin that their people are stealing houses from people when they go on holidays and shit like that. It is so false, you know. It's it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. It is ridiculous. You're absolutely right, Nicole. So yeah, ocupación and Cale Borroca, which is lucha callejera, which is lucha struggle callejera in the street. But if you write it in the Basque language, it writes Kale Borro Oka. Which was also criminalized by the Spanish state. No surprise there. It was basically people fighting in the streets, you know, protesting ha the hard way. So here it says La Legendaria Casa de la Montaña in Barcelona. So La, the Legendaria, legendary. It was a legendary place. It was fantastic and everybody knew it. Fantastic place. Casa, house, de, of, la, uh, the. Montaña is in Catalonian. If we were to write it in Spanish, we would write mon, oh, montaña. But the original name is in Catalonian. So, mon, oh, 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 montaña. So, in Barcelona, which, you know, most of the people in the alternative uh, ambience call it Carcelona, because carcel means jail. <laughs> but that's another story. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to get you all derailed. <clears throat> but there's the letter K, not very used in Spanish 
uh, in general, but very used in the alternative parts to replace the hard C. Ocupación, cale borroca. Very, very widely used in the Basque language, though. Like, they don't have the hard C, I think it's all case. So when they use the C, it's for the, the soft C, the th or s. Depends so if you're Spanish from Spain or your Castilian is from Latin America. L, L, that's the letter L. <clears throat> it pronounces more or less the same in, as in English. Yeah. Lucha, lealtad. Lucha is the struggle. And lealtad. And in this case, I'd like to uh, point out uh, this word over here, which is actually... Ah, close the thing. Ah! Damn it. Ah, ah, ah. Me, me, me. Lucha de clases, which means class, class struggle. Lucha can be, uh, can be struggle, but it can be also fight. It's very interchangeable. Let me change the opacity over here. Uh, effects, transparency. This is 20%. So Lucha de Clases, as we sign in, in blue. Yeah, the, P the PC, yeah, the Communist Party of Spain. But you got to include everyone, you know. I included the, the anarchist. I mean, you know, the ground people in the PC and the Communist Party in Spain, they're pretty alternative. And in my neighborhood, we have this uh, social center, center called La Piluca, where, where all kinds of people from all kinds of tendencies f fight together. And there's a there's some people from the from the youth Juventudes del PC the youth of the Juventudes you know remember from letter J and they're really fine people so yeah I understand you know the bu bureaucracy and whatnot you know and the, the being integrated in Izquierda Unida and uh, going into parliamentary elections and whatnot but they do have their their other sections that really participate in the actual struggle. So a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I understand your concern though. So lucha means in this case struggle, lucha de clases, as as is uh, as is shown like in, in blue. So uh, lucha de clases, class struggle. So this text says, uh, do you still think that there is no class struggle and represents you know the thing with the ostrich digging their head into the ground which by the way and it's a it's a fun meme <laughs> but it's it's not actual biology like os os ostriches don't do that but you know it's a fun meme it's, don't take it you know to to don't take it to too hard anyway so todavía it means yet crees means you think que no, that no, that there is no, que no hay, that there is no, lucha de clases, class struggle, lucha de clases, class struggle, struggle of classes. And you see the interrogation, we use the opening interrogation too, which is, I think it's very useful. And yeah, it takes a little bit longer to type and you don't use it like in text messages and stuff anymore. But I still think it's a very useful thing, mostly for subtitles and whatnot. But yeah. So L, lucha y lealtad. Lealtad means loyalty, which is the loyalty that comrades owe to each other. Las camaradas nos debemos lealtad entre nosotros. So lucha, lealtad, letra L, L. Elle, which is a, it's a contentious, uh, <laughs> it's another digraph, so it's officially not in the, in the alphabet academically, but I think it's, you know, same as before, uh, as the che, and it's going to happen again in the double R, the R, R. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to include it for educational purposes to, to teach Spanish as a foreign language. So, batalla. And llamada. Batalla means battle. Batalla. 
And you know, uh, usually the double L is is pronounced y, very soft, right? Y, batalla, llamada. But you know, some people like 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 me, madrileños, we tend to go a little bit lazy on our pronunciation, and we go batalla, ya, ya, batalla, which is it's it's technically incorrect, <laughs> but it's an accent. You know, what can, what can you do? <laughs> what are you gonna do, right? It's an accent. Let's you know, let's learn to live with it. <laughs> do you have a setting that would? Let me stream a lower image quality to buffer less. Oh, is it buffering? Damn it. Could be my, my bandwidth. No, it shows very green over here. I'm focusing on the lessons. I'm not checking the stream so much. Sorry about that. There there can be, probably there can be a setting in, on Twitch or something. Okay, it's working fine for you, Nicole. Thank you. Yeah, try audio only. Worst worst case scenario, yeah. But yeah, we. Uh, I I would say batalla like you're reading it, <laughs> Randis. <laughs> but it's my sucky uh, madrileño accent, which you know, uh, some people say that most madrileños say they don't have an accent, and it's not true. You know, the, supposedly the the perfect academic Spanish is is uh, spoken in places like Valladolid, which is. Contains one of double L over here. Mostly in, in in places around Leon, the region of Leon, the Castilla Leon, as we know it now. But Valladolid, that's the name of a place, Valladolid. But if, if you use just this part, it says Valla, like a fence. Valla. Valla. Not to be confused with vaya, which is like, ah, damn it. <laughs> or vaya, uh, like a, the subjective of uh, to go. No sea que vaya para allá. But that's a, that's a more complicated thing that we're not going to touch on this <laughs> very basic lesson. Huh? <laughs> this is, yeah. Vaya, the berry, absolutely. Vaya, as, as Aspavientos wrote it here in the chat, vaya. It's berry, and uh, yeah, also, you know. So you, c you can say vaya, 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 or vaya, vaya. <laughs> oh, vaya, vaya, vaya. <laughs> what, a, what a berry. <laughs> like if you write it like this, and we have also opening exclamation signs. Vaya, vaya. <laughs> you can say, what a berry. <laughs> vaya, vaya. <laughs> <laughs> and they sound the same. They wrote differently. <laughs> oh, vaya. Vaya. Vaya, vaya. <laughs> what a fence. <laughs> Which it would had like a it would have like a different sound if you do it correctly, but let's uh, let's face it, it's, we're going to end up saying vaya, vaya. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're finding this useful, Nicole. I'm so glad. Every time you're like, this is too complex for this basic lesson, I'm just like, yes, <laughs> I wanted to ask for that. <laughs> ask away. If you have questions, you know, in your life, if you have doubts or questions about anything, just ask. I'm, I'm reading you all, okay? Uh, as much as I can. I'm going to go back to the... Back to the um, to the image over here. That that's how you pronounce it, right? <laughs> you also you also have the ja 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 bada bat bataza zamada. <laughs> Your therapist. Yeah, sure, we can hang out. Why not? Yeah, you know, yeah, we can hang out. Just yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, so batalla, a battle, llamada. A call, a call, you know, uh, when you call someone or when you hear a call from the heavens, you know, for religious people, which I'm not, but I respect you all. You're religious people. You have all my love. You're fantastic. But yeah, uh, batalla and llamada. So batalla is battle. 
And if you see the picture, it has some something in uh, it has something in French. <laughs> but if you see if you hear the inscription, I'm gonna try and zoom in t over here. <laughs> There's another. <laughs> it's very handwritten, but it says "tomada" like taken, a la to the canalla, which is scum, fascista. Tomada a la canalla fascista, taken from the fascist scum. So this was uh, an impounded vehicle, the impounded to the fascist in the Battle of Guadalajara. I'm going to read it in Spanish now. Vehículo incautado a los fascistas en la batalla de Guadalajara. And I want to... Yeah, you remember when I talk about the, the accents? I'm going to zoom in to this word over here. Vehículo. It's a, what we call esdrújula. It's where it's, there's a one, two, three, and four uh, syllables. Uh, low, I, I, I go. So the first syllable is not accented, but the second is and the third and the fourth aren't, basically, because we have just one accent per word. But as you, if you see the what we call tilde here, the, which is the, the accent mark, um, it's vehículo, vehículo. And you see the H still mute. Don't say vehículo. <laughs> it's vehículo. But if you write it like this, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt in my eyes. Don't do this. It's, it hurts. It hurts in my eyes. When I see typos like that, it, they burn in, in my soul. And <laughs> You feel bad for your last therapist? <laughs> it can happen. Don't worry, they're professionals. I can be a friend, not a therapist. But, you know, you got to have both, I guess, in these days. Uh, vehículo, that's an esdrújula, which is, uh, we, we say, incautado. The accent is in, in ta, incautado, like any other, any other, any other English word, right? They, you, you take it for granted, incautado, like uh, impounded, impounded, right? Up, uh, down, up, down impounded or incautado down down up down but in this case vehículo is down up down down so uh, you have like um, this is an esdrújula type of word and these are the three types of, of words that we have agudas which is uh, down down up uh, graves or, or llanas you see llanas <laughs> I was gonna say llanas <laughs> madrileño <laughs> But llanas, which is uh, down, up, down. And estrujulas, which is down, up, down, down. Basically, you start counting from the last syllable and it's easier because the last syllable is accented. And in this case, if we do accent here, we could say vehículo, <laughs> which is not a word. And if you say vehículo, it's funny because you say culo. <laughs> culo means ass, basically. <laughs> culo, like the bottom. It's not a swear word it's an actual word you know it's the but the bottom of your of your back if you know what i'm saying your lower back but yeah it's a very neutral way to say ass without being uh you know all sweary and stuff i i don't think there's a bad word for culo actually culo is you know what you got there and that's all there is right the verb conjugations that, uh, that you're most out of practice. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. But I know I just need to practice it openly more. Definitely. Definitely. Okay, maybe Spanish is harder than I thought <laughs> seeing you teach it. I mean, no, not really. It's, um, you know, when you teach, you got to go like super thorough. But, you know, sobre, sobre esdrújula. Sobre esdrújula? Are there sobre esdrújulas? I forgot that one. Damn it. Quite literally, super esdrújula. Yeah, yeah. It's an over esdrújula word. I don't know. I don't know if these things are translated. I I never I never checked it. I should have. <laughs> but vulgar, yeah, kind of vulgar, yeah, definitely. Which, by the way, it writes the same, but pronounces instead of vulgar, you say vulgar. 
like the pulgar with a P, <laughs> it's your thumb. But pulgar with a B, with a B, it's um, with a V, <laughs> it's uh, vulgar, which is vo- vulgar. So in Mexico, it's not well received. Uh, yeah, the culo, okay. The syllable thing, uh, not a swear word. <laughs> I have fantastic swear words in 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 Mexico and Spanish. It's fantastic. I love it. Although, yeah, you know, I I'm, I struggle a lot with the with the word culero, which is like um. It's it's a it's a very, it sucks. Don't don't use it because. I found it funny because culo in español from 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 Madrid is nothing, right? So saying something like culero is like, ah, but it's it's a very homophobic uh, slur. So I had to learn to stop saying it. It sucks. So for, forget about that one, okay? Let's try, let's strike it from, let's go back to the lessons. <laughs> I'm gonna read y'all. I wouldn't say cool on TV around your grandparents. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but it, it is, you know, we all have one and it's very neutral. It could be my my, my Spain uh, bias, which I accept. So in Latin America, culo is a little, a little bit of a bigger thing. Clapping out to the syllables, by the way, which I do a lot. Yeah, if, I, if you can hear a word like batalla, 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 batalla. One, two, three. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it, <laughs> the swears in Mexico are poetically mean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's incredibly homophobic, which is you know, it, I it sucks because it has so much wordplay uh, potential, but I can I cannot I cannot do it anymore. Yeah, it it is it is homophobic as fuck. I'm not gonna use any that word anymore. It sucks. It sucks. I used to like it because of the sound. Because again, in Spain, you know, culo, no big deal, you know. But yeah, which which is incredibly difficult because you can use like the word for muscle, musculo. <laughs> so what do you, what do you call those guys who are in the gym all the time? <laughs> Put it together. I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> which is fine you know if it wouldn't be a slur you would imagine you know that they, they'd be pumping iron all the time and then go to the go to the um, go to the dressing room and finish the party which is like approved right it sucks that it's a slur but it's a slur so we face it and we side with the people who are oppressed with it so Let's go back to the, to the sentence of vehículo incautado, incautado a los fascistas en la, en la batalla de Guadalajara. The Battle of Guadalajara is dear to my heart because uh, one of the stars of the Battle of Guara- Guadalajara was C- Cipriano Mera. Cipriano Mera was a Spanish anarchist who was organizing and who was in jail, in and out of jail all the time during the Republic for and before the republic to be honest he was like 40 years 40 something years old when the war started and uh, he was taken out of jail just to just to liberate madrid he was from tetuan a neighborhood right ne- where where uh, right next to where i live and where i have a lot of family there in tetuan de las victorias which used to be it used to be its own little village until it was absorbed by madrid and became a neighborhood but I'm talking about back in the day. And uh, Cipriano Mera was a, a brick layer. Basically, he was a um, construction worker. And and he was self-taught into everything. He he, he always carried with his, in his suitcase with his tools, he always carried a book, like The Conquest of Bread in his toolcase. He was, for me, he's an inspiration because he was not an academic. He was not, you know... Uh, for me, someone I can look up to and say, I wish I would be so badass as this guy. He fought in the war so in the war so bravely, first in the militias, and then he accepted, you know, that the the the, the army was gonna be uh, organized as an army as the Communist Party wanted it to. So he folded in and uh, as an anarchist, but still folded into the the structure, and he became like a general, and he led the Battle of Guadalajara, uh, where there were like a lot of. Um, 
Italian troops with um with uh heavy armored vehicles and even light armored uh, armored vehicles like a one person type of vehicle with a sh machine gun and very small and they were like high technology they were testing it in, against you know the the against the Spanish anarchists basically basically and he kicked their asses he kicked their ass of those Italian pieces of shit you know those fascists so this is one of the trucks that they impounded. So I'm going to go word for word so we can do the part of the Spanish lesson. <laughs> vehículo. Vehículo means vehicle. It kind of... It's a little bit self-descriptive, isn't it? Incau incautado means impounded. Incautado. A, tú, los, the... Fascistas, fascists. En, in, la, the, batalla, batalla, battle, de, of, Guadalajara. Guadalajara is the name of the of the um, of the city, but also the region of Guadalajara in in Castilla, uh, in Castilla La Mancha, and the uh, central east center east part of Spain. Let's say more center, but it's east of Madrid, basically. But it's also the name of a state in, in Mexico, which is also very dear to all of us. I, I'm, yeah, can I say, I love my Latin American comrades, can I say. Okay, uh, again, let me know if you have any doubts in the chat, okay? Moving on, double L was tough, El Ye was tough. I'm, I'm sure it's got you twisting in the tongue like, ay, yeah, ay, yeah. try and pronounce, you know, the stuff uh, as you go. You can play these, this lesson when it's up on YouTube. You can play it as many times as you want uh, and go over it, you know, and if you get the materials, which I put it, I'm going to put them in the chat again. Did I? No, wait. Ah, I lost it. Okay. Wait a second. I lost them. Uh, okay. Let me fetch the materials for y'all while you see the picture of mm, uh, Aprender Español Lesson 1 PDF, which is a little bit your reward for coming here. It's also on my Patreon, okay? But I don't wanna I don't wanna go full grifter on y'all, okay? <laughs> you know that's not my style. I'm a friend, not a grifter. So I'll paste it for the people in the chat. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, there's on my Patreon, there's uh, the link to this PDF. And uh, wonder at the image of our comrade Federica Monseni, the one of the first women ministers in, in Spain ever. And she was an anarchist and she was badass. And she introduced a lot of good legislation during her very short but very intern, intense term in office. So M, M, M as in mujer. Mujer means woman. Mujer. And it's got the, the hard J too, so you can practice. Mujer. Mujer. And then modernización. Modernization. And why mujer and modernización? Because those two words are very uh, intertwined. Federica Mons Monseni was one of the first women una de las primeras mujeres ministras en España. One of the first women ministers in Spain. And she introduced a lot of good reforms. Let me pull up the, um, the wiki article for, for her so you can check it out. And see, I think it should be in English. Federica Monseni, she is legendary. And one day I'll bring an interview of hers and translate it because... Damn, this woman was a legend. This woman was a fantastic legend. So she was the Minister of Health. Yeah. There you go. Uh, where's the chat? Let me go to the chat for a second. And I'll be right there with you. Here's Comrade Federica Monseni. Fantastic Comrade. So, mujer. M is, it's, yeah, very straightforward because it's the same. M, 
is the name of the letter, M, and it pronounces just the same as in English. But we can say, we can translate the caption, La, the, camarada, comrade, Federica Monseni. And uh, I'll, I'll do an interview of hers and I'll do some of the translation rounds with y'all so you, you, can, you can appreciate her thoughts. Yeah, of course, of course, uh, of course, of course. I mean, language is the conveyor, but it, this is a language for leftists. So <laughs> it, it, it has to be like that. We need to learn the, the good values at the same time that we, uh, that we get the good knowledge as well. And uh, from the best of the good, we go to the worst of the evil. And it's on the letter N, which is very straightforward as well. She she was a fantastic woman, through and through. Federica Monseni. She was an awesome comrade, and she was missed. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do some of her interviews when she was like an old lady in the in the 1980s in Spanish TV. After the transition, she lived in exile. She 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 survived the. The quote-unquote civil war, which, again, as I always say, was not a civil war, but an extermination war car uh, carried on by the fascist after a failed attempt of a coup d'etat. But this is the N, 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 which is, you know, simple uh, as it goes, N, and it's very straightforward. So, neoliberalismo, neoliberalism. That's why I have George, Bo George W. Bush and Milton Friedman here. Negacionismo, which is neg negationism or denialism, or I don't know, do you have a word in English for that? I guess so. Negationism, right? This is very, very straightforward. <laughs> You're going to bring me a pillow. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're so kind. <laughs> denialism, yeah, negacionism. Neg 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 negacionismo. So, you know, like when when those evil fascists, you know, uh, try and do some revisionism and say that the Holocaust was a sham and it didn't, didn't happen and so on, right? So, neoliberalismo, it's an evil, you know, the, so, neo and liberal and ismo, which is, you know, how we build words in, in most languages, but... You know, we have a lot of this, you know, the isms of the art. Also, I would like to do something here. It's like when you get an N, I'm going to and make it smaller. And this, N, N, which meant no name, which was uh, for the people who were disappeared, quote unquote, disappeared by the dictatorships in both uh, Chile and Argentina. And in most, you know, Latin American countries, uh, by the colonizers, which meant no name, N N, which there is a beautiful song by Abeas Corpus, back from I think whew, that's forever ago. But no name is the name of the when when they found some of the disappeared, who were actually killed, but they called them disappeared during the Chilean dictatorship, and the Argentinian. Uh, dictatorships, where they actually threw people, you know, into the sea from airplanes in Argentina, uh, from to Rio de la Plata, to this delta, and it's N N, no name, the nameless people who were could not be identified, but they their bodies were found by those cruel dictatorships. So this is a lot of evil, and the letter itself is very straightforward. N and we go gonna read Los Malvados, George W. Bush, and Milton Friedman. So the Los Malvados, evil. Um, George W. Bush, oh, George W. Bush, because W is W, which is not included in this alphabet to be honest, because it's mostly foreign type of thing. I wanted to include the K because of the political significance, but we could consider, you know, that our words that are mostly used for foreign words. Uh, like the Japanese, they have the katakana, right? Which is a whole alphabet. But in our case, we have 
a couple of letters, no biggie. So E, which is the just the letter Y, means and is the 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 the, the conjunction and. So you need to find a ah, <laughs> oh, that's so cute. <laughs> What? Head haberdashery. Yeah, what a word! What a word! I'm gonna write you my 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 favorite word in Spanish, or one of my favorite words. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna write one of them, and I'm gonna leave another one for 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 the for the other later. <laughs> Uh, you looked up. Oh, that sucks. Uh, I'm sorry that you had to find all the, the, uh, uh, the, the uncaps. So the, the letter Y by itself, E, it's pronounced as a E in this case, because it can be used, uh, the letter Y can be used as a vowel and as a, as a consonant. And we'll get there. <laughs> but in this case is the, the and, it means and. So, George W. Bush, or George W. Bush, E, and Milton Friedman. Two pieces of absolute shit. And one of them friends with uh, Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, we all hate chuds. It's very difficult to deal with. Okay, and we got the star of the of the day. One of the stars of the day, the famous, the very famous letter Ñ, Ñ, which is uh, only exists in uh, Spanish. The Ñ, this famous, yeah, uh, N with a funky uh, hairdo. <laughs> is it? Oh shit! It's the Trumpian N. <laughs> <laughs> Friedman's son debated EJ? What what why would EJ do that to himself? Poor guy. I we love him. EJ, if you're there, I'm sending you a hug right now. A comrade hug. Let's 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 do um, yeah, any which is the N with a funky hairdo. It's a punk rock N. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend I didn't say the thing I said before. <laughs> and it's pronounced Ñ, Ñ. So if the um, former letter was N, this one is Ñ, Ñ, Ñ. And uh, you can find probably, you can practice the, your letter Ñ by playing the Nyan Cat. Nyan. So we have uh, two words. Cañamon. Cañamo. Sorry. <laughs> Cañamo, which is hemp. Cañamo is hemp. Let's put it here. Hemp. Oh, hemp. Cañamo. And cañón. Cañón could mean a cannon, like a cannon that you shoot, you know, big pellets the size of a football. <laughs> um, but it could also mean the canyon, like the Colorado Canyon, which is worldwide famous. I'd love to go there one day because, yeah, I, mean, I got friends in Colorado, so well, it, I'm sure it's a pretty long drive from Boulder to the canyon. But then again, you know, I'm not going to be able to travel to the States anytime too soon, so. Oh, El Sinistero, welcome. Don't worry, I'll put this on YouTube, okay? So you can watch the whole thing. But welcome, welcome with us t today, right now. Or right now, today, now. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> tonight so with uh with, with and you just came for the star you know the 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 best letter on the spanish alphabet the ñ with the, the most unique 
we are using now the word cáñamo, cáñamo, which is another esdrújula, cáñamo, 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 no, no, cáñamo, ni cáñamo, no, es cáñamo, cáñamo. Cáñamo is the plant of hemp, as we see in the picture over here, which says plantas de cáñamo, hemp plants, plants of hemp, which is, that's how we say, you know, things in Spanish. We don't say like simply hemp plants, we say plants of hemp, because <laughs> our grammar works like that, okay? <laughs> it translates poorly, I know, but it, in, in Spanish it works like a charm. <laughs> Mota, bueno, bueno. There are many, there are many species of hemp, and one of them is uh, we have the all of all of the branches of the sativa and, and indica hemp's. But there are other hemp's that don't don't have mota in them. <laughs> mota is the Mexican uh, the Mexican word for um, marijuana. Marijuana was 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 invented in the United States. Uh, the 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 denomination was a uh, was a way to try and and stigmatize the drug by uh, associating it with a Spanish sounding name, so they would uh, associate it with uh, uh, Latin American immigrants as a terror campaign. If you if you research the um, the origin of the of the name marijuana or marijuana with a J, marijuana which is Maria Juana. It's uh, very re regular. You used to live in so South California, and that's what all the Hispanics called it. Yeah, m Mota. Yeah, that, that's a Mexican uh, way. In in Spain, we call it Maria or Marihuana. Uh, it's very useful, useful, useful to call it Maria, like the name. But, you know, we can also use tetrahydrocannabina. No, I'm just kidding. That's way too technical. But in Spain, it, it, it is more popular now to use the whole plant. But back in the day, I remember, you know, the popular thing was to catch hashish, which was the, the you know, the, the way they, they separated the, the, the resin from the plant and they, you know, compacted it into little balls. They, they were very easy to carry in your in your butthole, basically. So, um, and in in Madrid we called it costo, and it was co shit. You see, and we use that word that I'm not gonna use <laughs> because it's a homophobic slur in Mexican. But we didn't use it in that way, and we used it in a way that it comes from the ass. It's costo from the ass. And a lot of people used to, yeah. But cáñamo, the hemp, is a it's a it's a big family of plants, and not all of them have flowers, uh, female flowers that uh, sweat the delicious resin that is very high on tetrahydrocadnabin. Okay. Uh, does it produce less anon uh, loads of hash? Yeah, I mean it's a very popular thing, you know, to bring it. We we had a, an expression which is a little bit racist, uh, but not so much. Which is bajarse al moro. It's coming down to the moor, literally. Which is you know when people went to to Algeciras to the south of, of Spain and caught a ferry to uh, usually to. Um, ah, Oh, damn it. Uh, my brain is spongy right now. Let me... Uh, let me see. Uh, uh. We caught the ferry in Algeciras. Let me see. Oops, it took me to Gibraltar. Wait a sec. Algeciras, and it left us in, not in Ceuta, but in, in Tangier, yeah. And, uh, you know, people go to Tangier and buy a few bowls of, of, you know, it's fine, it's a plant, you know, everybody can grow it at home. I, I, it's so, it's so ridiculous, you know, that, that it's illegal, it's, it's absurd, it, it is absurd, it's, 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 Alcohol is way more harmful and it's fully legal and regulated and even popular. 
amongst people. It's so socially accepted. And alcohol, it damages your body in... <laughs> It damages your internal organs. It, it makes you, <laughs> you know, with time, it, it, it really can make you sick. And, and, and people are super happy, uh, deeply with alcohol. And, and for some reason, you know, uh, the cannabis plants is forbidden. But yeah, hemp, hemp you can use to, to make a lot of, uh, yeah, fabric and uh, rope. You can make you can make a lot of there. There's a lot of awesome byproducts that would really solve a lot of problems with scarcity of of materials. And you can make creams, you can make uh, cosmetics, and you can make milk. You can make a lot of stuff. But moving on. Yeah, of course, of course, we all know. But. Let's go move to the letter O, which is O, simply O, O, opresión, oligarquía. Again, very straightforward words, oppression and oligarchy. But figure out how to the Q, how the Q works here. Key. Again, the U is a bridge word in this consonant, just to make it, you know, because you always use the, like in question, but... You don't pronounce the, the U. So if you write que, for instance, which means what, you would write like que? What? What? So o, opresión, oligarquía. Opresión. The oppression is inherent to our societies, and oligarchy is a couple. Of, uh, it's a group of you know people who have the power uh, and keep it to themselves at the expense of the rest of the population. Oh, I'm sorry, you got in trouble, sinistro. You know the the legality of drugs is is it's a ridiculous way of social control, but here we got our oligarchy, the Spanish oligarchy. Check it out, la oligarquía, el rey, the king, el hijo de puta del rey, and his and his cronies on top with uh, all of the money. Below the church, la iglesia. Again, with more croonies and more uh, quote-unquote journalists. La Iglesia Católica in España. Police, the military, and the repression. And uh, on the left, we can see the Mossos, the Escuadra. And next, you can see the Municipales and the Nacionales. And then the Navy, the Army. I mean, the, the Navy, the... Um, yeah, uh, all... Shit, how you call the people who fly in airplanes? <laughs> Forgot. Ah, fucking military scum. And uh, the guy with the funny hat is a Guardia Civil, which is like a militarized type of uh, force, and a riot police motherfucker, and uh, another, uh, you know, ground military, and the Legionarios on the far right, of course, where they should be in the far right. And below them, the politicians and the new aristocrats who don't care and having a feast. And at the bottom, and the, the people, the working class, very angry, the migrants, the service workers, the repair workers, the farmers. Even Wally, is, that, is this Wally? Is, is he? Is, he's a kid. Uh, he's so hidden, he could totally be Wally. It's a bunch of pixels right now because of resolution and whatnot. Air Force, yeah, Air Force, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, basically, right? 
So, opresión, oligarquía, letra O. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There's another very straightforward one, P. P, the P. But we call it P. And we're going to go very fast on over all of the letters, okay? Just bear with me. <laughs> P, P as in P, partido, the party. Could be a political party or it could be a football match, partido de football. Could be a rugby match, you know, match, partido. But in this case, we have the example of Partido Comunista de Cuba, which is, I hope it's self-explanatory. Do you have any doubt about it? We have comrade Raul Castro here. Raul. And Politica, which is politics or policy. We can use the same word for both. Politica could be politics or policy having a policy about something. You know, like um, we generally have a policy of not uh, not exploiting the working class. Bueno, tenemos una política en la que en general no, tra no explotamos a las personas trabajadoras o la clase obrera. That would be an example of usage of uh, partido y política. Partido Comunista de Cuba. Solid like a radical policy. You know the drill. You know the drill, fam. You know that to be true, real knights. Okay, next. Q. Q is the letter Q. <laughs> not, not to be confused with the <laughs> fantasy fans of the right-wing persuasion. <laughs> uh, okay. And I'm going to fetch a moment. Because we're almost at the end now. We're going to take a little bit of a musical break. If I remember. Yeah, I think I remember. So, El Quinto Regimiento. Who were the... El Quinto Regimiento, or the Fifth Regiment, right? Uh, it was one of the first uh, responses uh, to the fascist uprising that held, that contributed heavily into the... Uh, the I with the, with the slash above, above it mean the I with the slash... Regimiento Acero. Could be that it's written like this. Let me see. Like this? Like the, the this thing I just written? Is this what you're what you're asking about? Uh working class icon. Uh what does the eye with the slash wait, wait, wait a minute. I I wanna I wanna I with a slash. Ah, the accent. Ah, yeah, the accent. Yeah, uh, here in Politica, right? That that's a that's an accent marker. It it marks the accent. We call it tilde in Spanish, and it marks where where the accent is basically. So it's Politica. It has some rules, but we're not gonna go into them right now because we're on the very very basics but we'll get there to that like that to that lesson and it's good to it's good that you notice them uh, yeah it's where the accent falls like uh, this is an esdrújula so there's two syllables k and t before so all of the esdrújula uh, all of the words that have at least two uh, syllables before the accent the accent is marked always, always marked with a. So, um, for instance, the same word, right? Is or uh, uh, and 
the, there's a funny, funny, funny song by by Javier Crae, which I highly recommend. Uh, I'm going to write here in the chat, Antipodas. That I, I, would, say, I would suggest as an exercise to translate it. And all of the all of the uh, all of the words or most of the words that he uses, he uses at least one of these in every verse, which is an esdrújula, because das is a syllable, po is another syllable, and ti ti is the the one that has the accent on. It's the emphasis that you well pointed out. Thank you, Mister Piece of Work. Emphasis, yeah. Uh, so the emphasis is on the T. So it's antipodas, because if I didn't have the accent over here, and this is not a word that exists, but we could say antipodas. And then by default, when there's no accent, and there are some rules, I'm not going to go through them right now, but by default, they're all like, like, like in English, you know, antipodas. Partido, you see? Partido. So par... And the, the accent falls here by default, partido. And there's no accent. If I would put an accent over here, then it would be partido. But doesn't, you know, make sense, but it's not a real word. But if I put the accent over here, ah, shit, sorry. <laughs> Forgot to type the accent. Partido, which is not a word either, but you get the drift, right? It's like... um. I hope I hope you you get the antipodas. Yeah, antipodas. Antipodas is like the I don't know if do you, do you have a word in English for antipodas? It's like the the place that is right in the on the other side of the world. It's like say the United States is on the other side of the world from I don't know China or something. Like uh antipodes. Oh, okay. Very straightforward. Yeah. Okay, antipodes. But you see in English is ant Antipodes, antipodes. Cool, cool. Glad you got it. So moving to Q, which is El Quinto Regimiento, which is written like that because we, we when we write the fifth with numbers, we do this little O here. And it when it's female, we use the uh, uh, quinta. So this is quinta and this is quinto. So this is the fifth regiment, and I'm gonna find the word. Uh, I'm gonna find the article right now. Uh, El quinto regimiento. Ah, uh, ah! Uh, you gotta type the whole thing. Okay, song. There you go. Okay. Ah, damn it. Janet. Fifth Regiment. En español, en la canción. Orígenes, quinto regimiento como ejemplo. Estructura de organización militar. Damn it, where's the song? Wait a second. I should have prepared this, to be honest. Okay, and the Banda Basotti made a super, super, super. A ver. <laughs> I can find it now. Okay. Uh, Quinto regimiento, canción. Uh, letra, letra. Directo. What? What? Damn it. I should, I should have come more prepared to this. You're seeing me fail on, live on stream. 
Okay. Not super in tune, but doable. Con el quinto, 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 con el quinto regimiento, madre, yo me voy al frente hacia las, uh, las líneas de fuego. Madre, yo me voy al frente hacia las líneas de fuego. Anda, jaleo, jaleo, suena la ametralladora y el pie. Al tiroteo y ahora en pie, al tiroteo. Anyway, that was a song that was written for this fifth regiment, el quinto regimiento, uh, during the quote unquote Spanish Civil War. That was not an actual civil war, but an extermination war carried out by the fascists uh, over the population after a failed coup d'etat. <laughs> Here is the non-compete streams. And then there's quedada, which is a very, it's a very madri madrileño, madrileño word. Quedada. Quedada is a, a meetup, when you meet up with some people. Quedar, the, the verb quedar, could be to remain, but it, it is also in this context used as uh, meeting, meeting your comrades. Uh, quedamos a las cinco. We, we, we meet at five o'clock. Quedamos a las cinco en el centro social. We meet at five o'clock at the social center. You know, where we're gonna organize, probably, and go through an assembly. Who's gonna take notes? Not me, not today. I'm not taking notes today. Any of you can take notes. But yeah, that's the letter Q which is usually used with this U to work on sentences. I mean, usually always. So, quinto, quedar, and you, you don't pronounce the U. The U is there as glue. Which... <laughs> you know the drill, las pavientos. El acta es lo peor de las asambleas. Eso y los turnos. But just to put this out there, if someone ever needs a note taker, that's literal all I do during meetings. <laughs> also draw nonsense of them. I do more doodles than actual notes, to be honest. If you give me a notepad, I'm gonna do more doodles than actual notes. Okay, moving on. R. And uh, this is a this is a this is a tricky one, okay? Oh, like in German, it works the same. Cool, 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 cool. Quince, quince. Uh, yeah, the number 15 is quince. So, o quinto, regimiento. Q-U-I-N-T-O. El quinto regimiento. So, R, R. I'm not gonna do, I'm gonna, not gonna abuse on this. I, I've been told many times, you know, why foreign people, that the, this rolling R is a little bit uh, inducing of things. So, but revolución, revolution, revolución. And you, 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 need to, you need to practice this, you know, the, the rolling R. And the rrr, but we have two different types of R. Uh, like when, when it's, single, it's a single R, it can work as in revolución. Or here in redistribución, we have the TR, which is R, not R, but R, R, tribución, tributo. Or let's say like the word for tree. The word for tree is árbol. Árbol. So it's a, it's a soft R. Árbol. Árbol. But revolución, that's a hard R. Redistribución, hard first, soft afterwards, used along with the T. Redistribución, revolución, or in Latin American uh, accent would be revolución, redistribución. So revolution, redistribution. 
And there's the cover for this book, which we see the UHP uh, appear again. Unidos, hermanes proletarias. And say sangre de octubre. Blood of October. Octubre, oct October. Sangre, sangre, blood, sangre. And it says here, Episodios de la Revolución en Asturias. In Asturias, there was this, um, there was this revolution carried on by the miners in Asturias during the, the Second Spanish Republic that was heavily repressed by the right-wing government at the Spanish Republic at the time. The Spanish Republic is usually painted as a monolithic, you know, happy-go-lucky fantastic democracy but the truth of the fact is that there were there were uh, a couple of, of um, terms with very uh, reactionary right-wing governments that were not beneficial to the cause of the working class and uh, Spain, uh, Spain was a very backwards uh, very uh, agricultural country where the industrial revolution was very slow to take place you know so everything was coming late to Spain, basically. These R's in Spanish and Italian, for example, are harder for me because the per placement of the tongue on the on the palate. Yeah. Yeah. From the rolling R's. Y yeah, it takes, a, it takes a little bit of practice, to be honest. But you can get there. If I got there, I remember when I was like uh, two, three years old, uh, I had a lot, a lot of problems. I, I say revolución or redistribución. <laughs> I was, I think I was French when I was two, three, three years old. <laughs> I couldn't re, 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 <laughs> until I learned to take my tongue out and put it towards my palate and revolución, revolución, redistribución. But yeah, it takes a it takes, it takes a little bit of practice. Rolling R in Spanish is formed more in the front of the mouth. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, uh, right behind your front teeth, but not not in the teeth. It's right above them, like brrr, the soft palate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's an area in your mouth. Uh, ah, brrr, and you vibrated, you know, with the air. Revolution. The Slovak rolling R's. Three D. Hard. It's more flat, flat top of the mouth, trivi. So I keep getting confused where <laughs> the tongue goes. <laughs> yeah, I get it. It takes a little bit of practice. <laughs> Absolutely get it. Damn, I would love to learn Slovak now. Damn. Uči vam se polskiego, ale to nie to nie same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes it takes practice. Don't don't beat yourself up with the rolling R because it's Hola, hola, Lorcan. Bienvenido. So we're 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 going through the alphabet, okay? And uh we're we we just finished singing El Quinto Regimiento, which I'm going to do again, you know. Con el quinto, 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 con el quinto regimiento, padre, yo me voy al frente hacia la línea de fuego. Ay, madre, yo me voy al frente hacia la línea de fuego. Anda, jaleo, jaleo, suena la ametralladora y ya empieza el tiroteo y ya empieza you love the R's because a lot of North Italians can do them. <laughs> we Europeans were always bickering with each other. Anyway, let's go to the double R, which is always rolling, always now the engine is going on full throttle. So barrio, barrio is a word that can be used um, like a, in Spain, a barrio, it's a neighborhood. Like the, um, the the borough of your city or the neighborhood, you know? Like if you live in, 
you know, uh, my, 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 my neighborhood is actually called Barrio del Pilar, which is a, you know, contains the word barrio in the name, which is very self-explanatory, I guess. Barrio, neighborhood. But in some places in Latin America, uh, barrio can also mean like a slum. Un barrio, los, barrio, los barrios de Caracas, por ejemplo, no, in Venezuela, they're like very impoverished. Uh, they're very impoverished areas, you know, they're like more or less like the, like the Brazilian favelas, you know, people, you know, having it rough and living on the cheap. There are many of those barrios, you know, which I think in Argentina I call them the villas. Welcome back, Riendis. Yeah, that street art is really good. So this is the Barrio de Vallecas. It's a popular neighborhood. It's a, a working class neighborhood in Madrid. Barrio Popular. Yeah, there's a lot of awesome street art. In general, you know, I think, you know. And then the word curro. Curro, it's a, it's a, it's a slang word in Spanish for work. So curro. Don't confuse with the, with the Italian Napolitano version, the nove nove puse. Curro, curro, guayo. Curro, curro, guayo, yo, yo. That, that's not the case. Curro is the, the, the job. In French, le boulot, right? Basically, the whip, the motherfucker. So, it says El Barrio Popular de Vallecas en Madrid. The neighborhood, uh, popular is like working class or, yeah, working class, we could say, of Vallecas in Madrid, my hometown. So this is south, uh, southeast of Madrid. It's like hood, yeah. Yeah, definitely. This is the neighborhood, you know. And you can, it's a very neutral term. It's not really, you know, street or anything. It's just very, very neutral, barrio. It, it, the poshy neighborhood in Madrid is called Barrio de Salamanca, which fuck them. And, um, you know, Barrio del Pilar, Barrio de Vallecas, Barrio de Mor 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 Moratalaz, um, el Barrio de, la, de Prosperidad, which we call it La Prospe. Well, they had like this popular school. Wow, we used to hang out with these people a lot. Bleh. <laughs> what bleh? Ah, el Barrio de Salamanca. <laughs> Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> Fucking, que les den por culo a los pijos, hijos de puta. <laughs> Fascistas, hijos de puta. And uh, yeah, so curro is like the job. Me voy a curro, I'm going, going to work. And uh, you got to have one. You got to have one if you don't want to starve. Um, yeah. Yeah, la moraleja is another awful Suburb, I would say. That's not even a neighborhood. It's kind of, yeah, protected and... Bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> but let's go to more positive places. And we go to the letter S, as we call it S in Espanol. S. And we got two words, sabotaje and sindicato. And you could say sindicato could be like a syndicate, but it's not really a syndicate. Like um, a syndicate is a false friend, what we call a false friend in, in language learning. Uh, it's just a l words that look similar, but don't mean the same thing. Sindicato in Spanish is a union, basically. It's a, it's a union. And um, yeah, so sin sindicato means union. I'm going to. Write it down here. Union, ya nerds. Okay. <laughs> union, sindicato. But union, if we write it in Spanish, <laughs> it's a union of people, you know, the joining forces together or, you know, even sports unions, uh, Union Deportiva, you know, it's clubs, you know, and you know, this, it's a very wide term, we should say. But union in English, sindicato, en español. Yeah, false cognates are, are a lot of fun. And uh, they, they give you some fun times sometimes when you, when you go, like, I feel, you feel brave and you're going to try and use a word. <laughs> and it's like, what? <laughs> 
They gave you fun times, definitely. You were terrified of, of gifts as a small child, since you grew up speaking English, German. <laughs> yeah, gift, uh, this, wrote, written gift as a gift in English, but gift in Norwegian means poison. So, in Norwegian is gave, a gift. A guy I used to work with, can remember where from, where his family was from in Mexico, I used to mock the Catalan language, <laughs> the LSPS sound. <laughs> now his border patrol DHS, ooh, which I don't know how to process that, it sucks. It really sucks. Eh, hey, Camasot, bienvenido, estamos aprendiendo español. I know you could use some. <laughs> I'm gonna gonna put this on 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 video on demand afterwards in 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 YouTube, okay? But we're we're on the letter S. Estamos en la letra S. Letra S. Mexico is a very divided place. Yeah, me Mexico is a wonderful place. It's super big, but we have a we have a lot of work to do together with our Mexican comrades you know, to make it more progressive because it, it's been carrying a conservative bias all the way between the gringos and the, and the awful things that the Spanish people did back then. We have a lot of work to do with our Mexican comrades who uh, we love. And, you know, they have like, in Mexico, they have like the most amazing, uh, you know, indigenous people there. Uh, I would say the Zapatistas, they have the, they have the word, they have the trick. The people in, in Cheran, you know, who organize themselves. Thinking of doing Duolingo on streams. <laughs> That's cool. I got this course. Uh, so, you know, welcome to watch it anytime with comrades and you can hang out. Uh, yeah, so S, S, sabotaje. Sabotaje is a sabotage, which comes from the, um, from the word sabot. Sabot were these uh, wooden uh, shoes that you can see in them. In the picture, which were very common in Europe in the in the old times, and during the Industrial Revolution, those workers would uh, throw the sabot into the machinery uh, to clog it and break it down. You know, to well, as a mean of protest, as I say in the caption here, which say, "Los sabot, the sabot, los the sabot, se tiraban. They were thrown a." To la, the, maquinaria, machinery, the machines. En, in, señal, signal, de, of, protest. Protesta, protest. Which, you know, if you, if you read it literally, you know, because of the grammar being so different, you know, the sabot were thrown to the machinery in signal of protest. It sounds like super artificial in English, but it, it works in Spanish like that. Like the, the you know people threw sabots uh, into the cogs of the machine to clog them and, and stop the work as a means for protest and strike and and uh, you know work workers struggle. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll, 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 as as you see, I, I can talk a lot. <laughs> you want to learn Vietnamese or Khmer, but it's so hard. Yeah, yeah, Polish. Damn it. Polish is hard. Anyway, sindicato means union, not syndicate. Sabotaje means sabotage, which, you know, how does it go? Like, um... you know the song, sabotaje. Which reminds me of another song by Cortatu, which is called uh, La Familia Iscariote by Cortatu. Another recommendation there, La Familia Iscariote by Cortatu. It goes like uh, sabotaje, rebelión, desobediencia. Agitación. Yeah, I know Kamazot. There's been like a lot of a lot of hype about your face reveal. 
I know you from before. You remember when we were on that call. <laughs> but it's it's so good that you can be in the open, that you can be comfortable like that. I hope I hope it turns out well. And uh, if you've done it, you know you have like amazing obsec. So you you know you know it's safe. So I'm happy you know that you can be more comfortable. That's fantastic. Do you have homework? Yeah, definitely. S study those songs and listen to those songs. Get the lyrics. Uh, try and translate them. Don't beat yourself up a lot. You know, if translation becomes very hard at the beginning. But definitely, uh, La Familia Iscariote uh, has some Basque words in it, but it's it's you know because it it, it includes the the word sabotaje, which the chorus goes like. Uh, let me see. Uh, 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 how do you uh, yeah sabotaje rebelión desobediencia agitación which uh, which uh, sabotaje sabotage rebelión rebelión desobediencia disobedience agitación uh, agitation, <laughs> which is like, uh, yeah, you know, you know the drill, making a mess. So the ones in power get destabilized and, you know, they don't get so comfortable with their, with their abuse. So T, the letter T, very straightforward uh, as the letter S. Trabajo, which means work, the right to work. Tierra y Libertad, which is um, an amazing movie, by the way, that you could watch as well as homework. Uh, you can watch it like with subtitles and, and stuff. It's got parts in English and parts in Spanish. So you can watch it with subtitles. It explains a little bit, you know, uh, about the Spanish, uh, about a, a small facet of the Spanish Civil War in a very fictionalized and, and very digestible thing, so, uh, which is uh, Tierra y Libertad, as you can see. I'm going to put in the... Yeah, Calle 13 is fantastic. Uh, uh, Tierra y Libertad by Ken Loach. Ah, Loach. Lo, uh, C -C -H. Sorry, I can't type. Ken Loach. That's, uh, that's a great movie. Uh, it's very fictionalized, okay? Don't take it, like, literally. Uh, and it's basically, like, a movie about the basic points of homenaje, an homage to, to Catalonia by George Orwell, basically. It has more or less the same. Yeah, the, yeah I'm, I'm not a super fan of the Seasler, but yeah. Go go back to work. Okay, don't work very hard, my friend. Have a great one, Kamazots. Much love, man. Oh yeah, Molotov are very are very loose with um with a C word, which I'm not not a big fan of it, to be honest. They had that and Matarilla and Maricón, which was like um I'm not a big fan of those, and they have very good point. I mean, dame 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 todo el power para que tenemos en la madre. That's a fantastic song, you know. But they have their ups and downs. Let's say they're a little bit old school for my. Mm, for my acquired sensibilities, let's say. But yeah, so trabajo, the right to work. That's why we see in the picture all these people from the CNT. Uh, well, all these people, not many people, but they're making like a, for a small company, which is like one of those temporary temp agencies and says camaradas, camaradas, which is self-explanatory, de, of, la, the, CNT, Confederación Nacional del Trabajo, National, National Confederation of Work, the famous anarchist uh, sin, uh, union, sindicato. <laughs> there you go, I was about to fall on the same thing. Defendiendo. Endo, uh, the, the end of the word, it's defending. It's like the ENG, ING on, the, on English. So, defender is the verb, and defendiendo is the like the participle. Uh... Well, you know, defending el, the, derecho, right, al, to the, trabajo, digno, dignified work, dignified work. 
He used to listen to Spanish pop music. There are, there are a lot of good bands all over Latin America, Spain. Really, really good stuff out there, to be honest. So, yeah, trabajo, tierra y libertad. Land and freedom. Tierra could be like the planet Earth. The planet Earth is called planeta tierra. So it's an interchangeable word for Earth and land. So yeah, let's move on to the U. Letra U. Unidad, unity, utopia. Very self-explanatory. So and again, you know, going back on the vocal on the vowels, the vocals, the, the vowels. <laughs> A, E, I, O, U. And this is the last vowel. So it's U, U, unidad, unidad, utopia. And this uh, Front Popular, this is in Catalonian actually, Front Popular, Front de Victoria y de Libertad. Because they 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 write libertad with two L's and the and the ending on the T because it's a different language. They're similar because they're Romance language, but they're different languages. But this is from the Popular Front, which was, you know, about uniting all the people, you know, from all the places to to fight fascism. So yeah. Cien años, yeah. In Estonia, you were in Estonia, okay. So, V, V is the letter V. Again, V and B, they're pronounced the same, theoretically. And some people will make them softer because, you know, usage is what it is. And we're heavily influenced by other languages and it tends to soften the V. So, voluntad, which is the will, the willpower. Fuerza de voluntad, willpower, willpower, the will. And verdad, verdad is truth. Truth, verdad. Voluntad, will, verdad, truth, truth, truth. <laughs> My switching, call switching from Spanish to English is a lot of fun. At any rate, grupo, which is a group, de milicianas, group of militia women, y milicianos, and militia men. Because uh, in, during the quote-unquote Spanish Civil War, which is not actually a civil war, but an extermination war carried out by the fascists after a failed coup d'etat, uh, People organize themselves uh, into militias, what we call militias, uh, the militias, which were voluntary groups of people uh, arming themselves, th themselves to go to the front lines and fight fascism. And they worked like a charm at the beginning of the war, and we could argue that after the fact, you know, there were after a few years and the strategy, you know, developing, uh, the communists wanted to... Uh, re uh, reabsorb the militias into into a unified military force and into military discipline and many anarchist groups anarchist militias were opposed to this tactic because they believed they were very well organized already and they didn't need the help of the communist party the spanish communist party marcela bovio the singer was working with Ooh, cool Never listened to Molotov, but I have friends who like them. Yeah. But, oh, and Anitos Verdes are really good. So, V, very simple, V. We're going to X. X is not super used in, in the Spanish but language, but there are some words that contain X, like exclusión, exclusion, espacios mixtos. Mixed spaces, like when you have, like in a feminist movement, you have uh, spaces that are only for, for women because of trauma and whatnot, you know, or for trans people to find their own, you know, their own safe spaces. But you also have like mi mixed spaces, espacios mixtos, where you can, you know, share with uh, everybody, basically, uh, is allowed to come in and, 
and you can have a more open discussion. But it's it is necessary to discern, you know. So mixto, it's something that is mixed. An exclusion is exclusion. And it's very straightforward in uh, in a way that we use it more or less. It's more or less like uh, like the X in English. So it shouldn't shouldn't be much of a problem. So la pobreza es una forma de exclusión. The poverty is a form of exclusion. Literally translated, okay, word by word. But poverty is a form of exclu is a form of exclusion. We always use the article at the beginning, or most of the time. So yeah, it sounds a lot stranger in English than it does sound in Spanish. It works. You know, one of the things that you that you got to do when you translate is you got to paraphrase basically because of the grammars are not super similar most of the time. So moving on. Why y griega y griega. It's how we call the Y. And we got both of the uses for Y because you can pr you can use it as a vowel and as a consonant. So apoyo is support. Apoyo mutuo, mutual support. Apoyo mutuo, mutual support. But also ley. Ley is the law. And we, here in this usage, we, we are using the Y as an E, as an I. La Y... Se usa como I. So, ley. This word over here, I'm going to highlight it for y'all. Ley. But in here we say apoyo. And in here say ley. So, apoyo. And here is ley. And it depends on the case. You got to see it on a case-by-case -case scenario. There's no formula here. But it's very straightforward once you get the knack of it. Hikama. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But that was uh, that that comes from uh, when the, when the, the letter X was used uh, uh, before there was a letter J in the alphabet. So that comes from from the Middle Ages, uh, late Middle Ages, uh, when Spanish didn't have like a, it didn't have a J letter, <laughs> basically. So we, the X was, and it didn't have, you know, the X was used the same way as the, as the, because we didn't have um, words like ex exclusion or, you know. So that's, that's why, that's why that Mexico carried away uh, to the, the X. And we say Mexico with a, uh, I think it was Don, Don Quixote de la Mancha, the, the classic work by Miguel de Cervantes. It was written before as Don Quixote, but it was pronounced the same, Don, Don Quixote. You know what I mean? So it, it is pronounced Don Quixote, but it was written like that in the 15th century when Miguel de Cervantes wrote it because we didn't have the letter J. You shudder when you, <laughs> but we always say in Spanish, we say Mexico and uh, we can write it in with both the J and the X. And no, uh, it's always going to be pronounced Mexico at any case. But yeah, I, I understand, you know, that this is a little bit of um, a thing, you know, considering the, the, the history of it. But it's very, uh, very straightforward uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way that is understandable, right? That there is this history, you know. You always seen it spelled with an X, but it, it's, it is correct, uh, academically correct. Too. I, I would always write it with an X right now. Because I also cringe a little bit, but you can write Mexico with a with a with a J, and it should be correct, Mexico. I know, I know, I know, I know, but it's also correct. I cringe as well. I cannot, you know, but yeah, let's let's focus on the why that we got here on the on the screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's very popular. And in Catalonia, for instance, or the Basque Country, and, and, it's, and it's, it is pronounced Xavi or Xavi. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's fine. I, we, can, we can have a little bit of a, of a hung up with the, with the X. We're almost at the end of the, of the alphabet anyway. So yeah, Xavi, Xavi 
is very popular in 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 Catalonia and in, in the Basque country, but in in the rest of uh, on the let's say Spanish speaking uh, Spain is more popular to have Javier. And I know I know I I have some some friends from Bolivia who are you know Javier with a, with an X as well, which is ex extremely fun. You know it's and Texas Texas is is. Texas in 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 English is also pronounced Texas because it used to be a part of Spain. <laughs> and Bejar, yeah. But Be Bejar is a, it's a place in Spain as well. If you if you if you look for it with a, a J, like with it's a it's a it's a small it's a small village in Spain. So you know, you know how it how it went. You know the the colonizers used to call you know uh, or places with um, Spanish names of you know it's like New York. There's a place called York, <laughs> or you know Guadalajara. There's a place in Spain called Guadalajara, or you know, which you know I like it more when there's like more indigenous. But yeah, the, the there used to be no X. But you know, to simplify, we could say the X is always X straightforward. In, except for maybe the, those cases, Mexico and Xavi and... Oh, you gotta go, Aspavientos, good to see you. Que bueno verte. Gracias por venir. No worries, no te preocupes, todo bien. Yeah, it should be Bejar, but no worries. Yeah, so why? And I'm not asking why, but the letter Y. <laughs> y. It's called... Greek, Greek I, <laughs> Y, <laughs> and uh, we have th those two cases: apoyo mutuo, which is mutual support, in which we use it as a as a consonant, which could say uh, we have a um, we have a um, we have a funny a funny thing, like if we if you write this this word pollo, like the first one here. Mexican, Latin America, pronounced TX Texas. But for whatever reason, Bejar is Spanish pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> so, pollo means uh, chicken, like a chick, you know, or, or chicken, you know, the, the, the bird. <laughs> but pollo, so pollo with a double L. It's a chicken, but pollo is a type of bench that doesn't have a back support, basically in public spaces, un pollo. And it's the same word written with a y, pollo, and pollo. Pollo and pollo. That's how it works as a consonant, the Y. I don't know if it makes sense. I hope it makes sense. Y'all think it's making any sense? I hope so. So I'm going to focus now on the <laughs> See, <I'm> the poor chicken. <laughs> right? I tend not to I I respect I respect non-human animals at any at any rate. So let's translate this. <laughs> that was a good one. Thank you for that one, Nicole. So, uh, Red de Apoyo Mutuo, the Pobla Sec. Pobla Sec is a village in Catalonia. It's actually um, a neighborhood in near Barcelona, in the, the outskirts of Barcelona. And they said a mutual support, Apoyo Mutuo. And Red, in this case, means a network. Like a, a Red is a word, not Red, the word in English, but Red in Spanish. Means uh, either a, like a fishing net or a net in general. Like a, a computer net network could be uh, una red informática. That's a computer network. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Issues with Italian. <laughs> pollo, pollo, pollo. Me siento en el pollo. I sit on the pollo. But I feed, I feed grain to the pollo. <laughs> It's funny because uh, pollo is also like a, a drug unit measure. 
like uh, I think it's I think it's a gram of cocaine or uh, two grams of cocaine or something. I don't I don't know because I don't use it, but I heard a lot. You know, pollo, medio pollo, and it's pollo supposedly with a double L, but everybody says pollo, medio pollo, because you know the madrileño kicks in, and pe yeah, penne, uh, the pasta, the 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 funky macaroni, <laughs> and penne the penis in Spani in español, yeah the dangly little appendix that some men and some women have and some non-binary people have. <laughs> Definitely. So, Red de Apoyo Mutuo. Red Apoyo Mutuo. It's a mu mutual support network in Poblasec. Poblasec, this, this neighborhood in the outskirts of Bar in Barcelona. And it says here, alert, uh, labor and social abuse. Do you have labor conflicts? Do, you, do they want to fire you from your job? Can you not pay the rent, uh, the mortgage, or supplies? And with the excuse of the crisis of coronavirus, many workers suffer the vulnerations of their labor works on behalf of uh, companies. And the application of uh, massive layouts and other me uh, irregular me measures are placing us in the most absolute uh, social and liberal, liberal uh, labor uh, vulnerability. Self-defense, neighborly self-defense. So this is a red de apoyo, red de apoyo mutuo. Apoyo, support. Ley is the law, is those absurd uh, rules that are made by bourgeois little old white men sitting on benches who are absolutely disconnected from the struggles and the strifes of society who they write in, on books, so other uh, police people for like indoor police types, the, call them judges, uh, apply them uh, to abuse us people, working people, working class, working class people. So there's that, I guess. And there's the Z or the Z, depends on which in Spanish is called Zeta. And we're calling our people the Zapatistas or Zapatistas if you're of the Latin American persuasion which is fantastic. So the Zapatista Army of Liberation, which is a fantastic group of comrades who uh, started a liberation movement of uh, indigenous char characteristics in southwestern Mexico, uh, Sierra La Candona, the mountain range, the La Candona mountain range, who are still uh, struggling for their independence and their own uh, self-support, who are free from the government, the Mexican government, who, you know, have a standing and that's something that is valuable. So Zapatista, if you're of the Spain per se, persuasion, Zapatista, if you're of the Latin American persuasion. The Z or the Z always functions as a, um, as a soft C. So it's, it's always Zeta or S, Z or S, if, depending if you're in, in Spain or you're in Latin America, and both are absolutely, absolutely, and Azar, Azar is, uh, pff, why did I put this word in? <laughs> Azar is like, um, it's the chance, you know, it's uh, luck, you know, the blind luck, something that is random that could happen or not happen by chance. So that's the letter Z or theta. And we're going to go back to page one and go quickly through the alphabet and we're going to pronounce the letters, okay? In Spanish. So repeat with me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right? It's a little bit like a, it's, it's good for kids to learn the right values, the correct values. Okay, let's go through the alphabet, okay? In Spanish, repeat after me. A. And you go, ah, okay? So, ah. Ah. B. B. C. C. If you're Latin American, C. 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 Che. D. 
D. E. E. F. F. G. G. H. H. I. I. J. J. K. K. L. L. Elle, elle, M, M, N, 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 O, O, P, P, Q. Q, R, R, R doble, R doble, S, S, T, T, U, U, W, which means the letter W that is not here, W doble. Double V. V doble. V. V. X. X. Y. Y. Z. Z. And if you're on the Latin American persuasion, Z. Z. And that's all the alphabet so far. So, <laughs> el libro del alfabeto de anarquista para que cache la mar. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you all the link again. Uh, it's a PDF, okay? Pff, pff, no biggie. I just put it together like in no time. Uh, but I'm gonna send you over the link again, okay? Uh, 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 Let's, let me fetch my Google Drive. Aprender Español, lesson one. Get link. Public link, copy link. There you go. For all of you who came to the live session, there's the link for this PDF, this lesson in PDF. So you can show it to your kids. And uh, for those of you who are going to be watching on YouTube later on, uh, I posted this um, PDF on my Patreon. If you want to access it, I'm sorry to put a pay one in front of you. You need to promote my Patreon. You know, I do have a Patreon and uh, coffee and uh, at uh, Kuku de Izki. <laughs> um, I, may, I may have to type it here. <laughs> With permission of the Zapatistas. At Kuku... Oh. Cucu de Iz Ki. That's it. So this should take you whether it's on Patreon or Kofi, Kofifi, Kofi, or you know how you want to call it in these uh, ap ap apocalyptic times. It's not, not yet post apocalyptic, but getting close, getting there. All right. So yeah, I think that's going to be it for the lesson today. We're going to do more uh, of these at some point. It's been like, um, yeah, it's been, <laughs> it's been way too long <laughs> over three hours of lesson. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut the recording here.